So now we move on to another way of dealing with negative numbers. <clears throat> and some of you may spot a connection between one's complement and two's complement and see if I can draw this out. I'll give you a question to think about. So two's complement um, differs from one's complement in that it's basically made up from two steps. Step one is you find the one's complement of a number and step two is you then add one to that. Now here's a thought and here's a question. Go back to your one's complement and go back to the example where you're, where you're subtracting two numbers, you convert the second number to a one's complement, then you notice that an extra one was hanging at the end and then you add it back in. There may be a very interesting connection between the two processes in this adding one in. I'll see if I can contrast them at the end. Let's work through an example. So just as previous, um, we're interested in our favourite example, which is nice and simple, 110 minus 001, which we concluded was 101, and that was standard subtraction. So in order to get the 2's complement, we take this little chunk here and we put it through a bunch of processes until we get to the 2's complement. So, we have 1, 1, 0, minus 0, 0, 1. So let's take, do a different colour, 0, 0, 1, as we did before and let's just convert it, it's one's complement. I'm doing it in boxes just for visual effect. Okay, so this turns into zero, one, one. Okay, so if we were doing the one's complement, we would simply add this number to this number here. If there was any extra number, we would add it underneath. But what we do in two's complement is step one we convert it into the one's complement and then step two we have to take this number and add one to it so we take the one one o oh, and we have to add one to it which gives us one 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 so the two's complement of Zero, zero, 001 is 111. That's the 2's complement. Two steps involved. We converted it, um, the 1's complement, then we took the 1's complement and we added 1. Standard procedure. So now we have 111 and let's add it to 110. Okay, your notes and your handout um, follows the same procedure. So we have 1. We have 1, 1, 0, and we're adding it to the 2's complement. And that's the 2's complement of 0, 0, 1. It's a negative, remember? Right, so we're going to add them. Now, so we're going to sign underneath, and let's follow simple addition rules. These two add, let's use a different colour, and that gives me 1. Um... These two add, 1 and 1 gives you 1, 0, so we put the 0 here and we carry over the 1. Come over to the third column, we've got 1 plus 1, which is 1, 0, plus 1 is 1, 1. Let's just emphasise that, I think I've mentioned that several times and you may not. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, 1. Okay, that's interesting. I get a 1 here, but then I've got a carry over of a 1. Now, <clears throat> in one's complement, when we had this, and this was the one's complement, we took this number and we added it back in. But look at the answer here. It is the correct answer, 101, one, if you can remember what the answer was from when we just did the straight subtraction. Hang on, we've got the correct answer, but we've still got one hanging over. Do we have to do anything with this, is the question. No, you don't. In, let's find a different colour, in two's complement, you just discard any extra, any overflow of this. So we, interestingly enough, are still stuck with this notion of three digits, three bits. 
three digits, three bits, right? So this remains three digits, three bits. But what's interesting is that in two's complement, if we have any numbers hanging over, we just ignore them, we discard them. And we get the result straight away. This is one reason some people prefer two's complement. With one's complement, we um, had to take the one and add it in to get the correct result. But notice this. In one's complement, in one's complement, all we did was we took the negative number and we inverted each character. We inverted each digit, right? But what that meant was that we had to, if we had an extra fourth digit, so if this is in a three-bit system and we then go and add them and we have an extra fourth digit, we had to then add that after, afterwards. In two's complement, this is a question for you. Not only do we invert each digit, right? So we do that one's complement thing, but actually we add a one straight away. We don't wait till we actually add the two numbers together. So they're very closely connected. I hope that hasn't muddled it up. But the question I, I leave you with is that, is there a reason that in two's complement you add one before you go on and you do your, um, what was it, one, one, zero, and one, 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 right? So then you do da, 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 and you ignore everything else. In one's complement, when you had one, one, zero, let me just scroll up and see what that was. Bear with me a second. Um, one's complement gave me one, you had one, one, zero, right? And then the extra digit, you then had to artificially add at the end, right? So one's complement and two's complement, for me, strike me as having very similar and interesting relationship. And you might want to investigate that so you're clearer about it. What I would recommend is you concentrate on the exercises.